The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. Yeah, we have Tom on t from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Good. Hi, Tom. How are you guys doing? Nico? Doing great. Good. Hey, um, your newsletter's outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the run of I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, no, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 now your hosts nico dehan and paige clark and good morning i'm nico dehan and welcome to living a primal lifestyle where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world that's right nico to recover our natural health and regain our health and our rights and our freedoms and i'm paige clark yes it's a beautiful morning in downtown st petersburg 74 degrees and going up to like 88 89 it's starting uh, to feel like summer around yes, here yes the switch has begun folks have a healthy summer subscribe to our health signals newsletter letter there's stuff in there to help you stay healthy and you have clickable links so you can get to all the research nico and i do all week long yeah the last one here uh on the 15th was about the great new nutrition collapse and we talked about that extensively and all those articles that we were talking about are right in there that's along right along with the other stuff and you can pick up our primal edge daily nutrition primal edge has its cell ingredients that are cell ready that get in and help you get the good stuff in and the bad stuff out based on fulvic and humic acid that's right and the number here is a uh 1-800-877-927-6648 do you have a little no, feedback no, 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 in either. your no no i that some reason my my earbuds yeah, give me a ring. It's kind of a, a weird feeling, but that's okay. Yeah, we're in the studio. With that. I like the subject today. Oh, good. Uh, I think we put together a great show. We're going to be talking about why sleep is so important. Yeah, you know, sleep experts agree that we need at least six, uh, seven, eight hours. I think between uh, seven and nine mm -hmm. is what experts are saying. Well, there's cycles we need to get into, and yeah. if we get less, we really don't get the full benefit of those cycles where a lot of the repair happens. That's for sure. Uninter in an uninterrupted sleep is one of the problems we have in our modern society. In fact, they say four out of ten adults are sleep-deprived, and approximately half of those adults have insomnia. That's right, and sleep problems impact a wide range of factors, such as mental health, um, and also the big diseases that we're fighting as epidemics today, diabetes, cardiovascular health, and obesity. They've all been linked to seven of the 15 leading causes of death. Wow. Yeah, so it's I was, important. I was watching a, a podcast uh, by Sophia Bostek, who's the author of this, on, uh, it's called highhealth.com and uh, she was talking to a group of Google employees so this was a uh, talk that was structured for employees so they were, could work harder and work more efficiently and everything like that and of course every employer would love that uh, and uh, they're getting a lot of information you know when corporations start studying why things happen mm -hmm. they get a lot of information so they can up the productivity of their people makes sense you'd want to do that well, that's a high-tech environment where they're exposed to a lot of blue light. Yeah. So hopefully they're paying attention to what Jack Cruz and some of the other people are teaching all yeah. of us that, that really our circadian rhythm is so important. Yeah, and what caught my attention, she's a nice-looking lady, and her, she, had, uh, she was wearing something with no shoulders. Mm -hmm. And she had these great shoulders and arms. Mm -hmm. I says, I'm listening to this podcast. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got into it. I <laughs> oh, I'll have to go check it out. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's so frustrating. I used yeah. to have great shoulders and arms. So, I mean, I want to get those back again. You just have to get body fat well, off. Well, you respond very quickly to exercise. If I, yeah, if I can really get going in it, yeah. I, yeah, I, I really do. But yeah. hey, let's go through this because okay. this author actually did do a gray white paper called Why Sleep Matters. And we're going to go through some references from over 50 published uh, academic articles. And they may have you rethinking the next time you decide to skimp on your sleep. And yeah. let's talk about how common it is. Yeah. And uh Experts agree that seven to, seven to nine hours are necessary for optimal health and well-being. However, in working populations, as many 40% of the adults are sleep-deprived or regularly get less than seven hours of sleep. I always put my alarm for around seven to seven and a half. Uh, that seems to be the number before. that I, I, I wake up with normally when I feel like I'm getting good sleep. Yeah. Um, but for some reason, for example, on the day of the show... Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get jagged reading before, and I go to bed around 10.30 or so. But, like this morning, I woke up at before 4 o'clock. 
Huh? You know, just because my mind knows mm-hmm. I have to get up early. Yeah. So that's not my best night's sleep. Mm-hmm. But luckily I went to bed earlier. So, oh. yeah. Uh, so uh, they say a fraction of this 40% are sleep stealers who feel they do not have enough time to sleep the seven plus hours. And That's 10, interesting, sleep stealers. In other words, they say no time for it. There's no I'm time just, for it. I'm too busy to sleep. Yeah, and that's what our modern society has. Mm-hmm. If we have uh, some people working more than one job, uh, you're going to school, you're trying to pay for your education while you're going to school, those types of things really impact you. And I would say during a very delicate age when you're really, your body is still uh, trying to adjust to, you know, being an adult, and here you are between the ages of 16 and 20, cramming your brains out and if you can't afford to go to school then you have to work to go to school which i did well this this, it's a lot harder these days i think it sure is because we have all this uh light hygiene insults you know we've got these devices you and i when we were teenagers these didn't happen i mean you might stay up in your room listening to music with your eight track but you didn't have one of these to keep you i don't know if you can zoom in on any of those graphs they're nice because 10 to 20 percent of adults are actually have a clinical diagnosis of insomnia and that's when you have trouble sleeping for three plus more nights um, a week but what makes insomnia different from a lack of sleep it's common to have occasional sleep problems it depends on personal factors or particularly addicting tv series or screen time or Mm -hmm. something like that but if you have insomnia a vicious cycle exists where poor sleep begets more poor sleep seemingly endlessly and without effective treatment Insomnia is remarkably persistent, with at least 60% of poor sleepers still suffering from the same symptoms a year later. Yeah, sleep plays an essential role in uh, regulating our emotions, and this is a big Mm -hmm. factor, I think, in our modern society. Behavior, uh, our psychology, the way we uh, treat other human beings, uh, the things that set us off easily, Mm -hmm. these all have to do, I think, with a a lack of sleep, and of course, the health the health insults are big because they, they're huge they, because they, that is our time for repair yeah and I'm, I'm thinking of people like uh the runner the other day that collapsed uh, in a marathon and died mm-hmm. she was rather young uh probably not the running but it was probably one of the factors that added another stress so mm-hmm. heart disease and cancer stroke accident diabetes uh, hypertension all these things uh, are linked to outcomes independent of our lifestyle behaviors such as smoking and exercise they are because of the sleeping that's exactly right and um you know more and more people are starting to look at really why are there there's like 10 key reasons why sleep matters let's go did we t- discuss those already no, well we haven't. well let's go through you know we'll start on them i mean depression and anxiety insomnia is more than doubles the risk of developing depression and anxiety yeah, and then this cognitive decline poor sleep has been associated with 23 percent of higher risk of alzheimer's disease yeah they say your brain doesn't detox unless you get into that deep REM sleep yeah. heart disease this is a big one yeah. uh poor sleepers have a 27 percent higher risk of cardiovascular events yeah they also are addicted uh, to drugs and have alcoholism problems insomnia interferes with the ability to quit alcohol and addictive behaviors such as smoking yeah how about cancer risk and uh, night shift workers again what do we hear when we hear the word night shift we're talking about circadian mismatch yeah. higher risk of breast cancer not good that's right so we'll cover the other five when we get back stay with so us stick around please. folks and it's time to pick up our primal edge right that's now that's right and it's right here someplace there it is. we take it every day that's right mm-hmm. every morning mm-hmm. very bad You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We We take take it it every every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Call, call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So we're going over these 10 reasons why sleep matters. And number six is obesity. Lack of sleep increases the levels of the hormone ghrelin. That makes you hungry. Yeah. Which causes hunger. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And fertility. You know, do we have an epidemic oh, of uh, fertility issues? Yes, we do. Uh, both short sleep and long sleep, actually over nine hours, uh, can actually be an impact. So, again, it's about being in rhythm with the sunlight and the, and the moonlight. Yeah. There's another one, diabetes, number eight, those with insomnia are one and a half times more likely to develop diabetes over a 10-year period. Yeah, sleep is so important, guys. And uh, chronic pain, uh, that's another thing that we're seeing uh, t that has become like a chronic illness. Yeah, and this is something that really is not good because if you have arthritis like in your knees, your elbows, and you're going to be sitting there aching at night. That's mm -hmm. when it's going to start showing Tossing up. Tossing and turning and not yeah. sleeping well. And finally, immune defense, sleeping just... Two hours less can quadruple your chances of catching a cold. And that goes back to the idea that we have certain REM cycles that we enter when we get into deep sleep. Right. And deep sleep is where the repair happens. And if we don't get that or we just cut off one or two of those cycles, we're really missing out yeah, from a health standpoint. Sure. So this next article, uh, Sleep, the Foundation of uh, Resilience. Oh, I like that. Same, same author. Yes. And so she's really focusing on helping us to get up to speed on the importance of, of sleeping. Yeah, she says here, it's not a question of whether stresses and a challenging life events will occur. That's simply inevitable mm -hmm. and today, that's for sure. The question employers are, uh, are increasingly asking is, how can they best enable their team to develop metal, mental resources they need to maintain peak performance in the face of adversity? I think... Employers are really starting to realize that the stress of everyday life and this constant screen time and onness, I call it the onness mm -hmm. that we have, uh, is taking a toll. And I'm glad to see companies are taking a little responsibility to remind people to find ways to mitigate their stress. Yeah, as long as they don't force people into overachieving types of things, I think uh, that can happen too. So I think these are interesting studies, especially for ourselves, so, so we can self improve our sleep because sleep not only means productivity to me but it means health to me and i think that's for me that's more important than the productivity although that's important too what if uh, monsoon kind of season is coming really. and you have a hole in your roof and you need to get things done so yeah so workplace sense. resiliency programs you may hear it if you work in a big company you know uh there's some of the key components of that are the ability to manage strong 
emotions and impulses. You said that earlier. That's right. That really, when we're not getting good sleep, the emotions and impulses are a little out of whack. Yeah, they get in the way. And mm-hmm. that's when they pop out. Also, supportive and caring relationships. So right. in a work environment, you you need people to get along. And we know uh, the Collaborative state Collaborative environment, yeah. Yeah, so we need people not only to get along, but not to be competitive, but collaborative. I like it. And being able to make realistic plans and to actually execute them. One yeah. thing is to come up with an idea, but the next stage is to make it happen, right? Yeah. And one of the most important things, I think, in any type of work that you do is to become a problem solver. Mm -hmm. These skills don't seem to come naturally. You need to learn these skills. It's part of behavior, but it's also part of knowing how human beings behave to what you say. And that's true, Nico, because we really have to have a positive Mm self-concept and uh, an optimism for the future. That's going to help people be productive and show up ready to start the next day. It's one thing my dad gave me. My yes, you, meant, was, you always talk about your dad. Yeah, he was and, a big influence. He was a big influence, and he always was optimistic about e- every side. And uh, I notice this in my life now. It makes a big difference. Uh, and, you know, some people uh, react more negative to things, and I don't think that it's a bad thing, too, because my wife normally will, when we're talking, and I have an idea, she'll first shoot it down, and then slowly but surely she'll walk towards the center. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think I do that too to certain things. So there's, especially if it's out of your comfort zone. Hey, let's right. go for a hike. Well, if you're not a hiker, yeah, well, I got you too much to do. You find all the reasons yeah. you can't do so it. So the, these are important things. And uh, one of the things that I know in my life when I was a salesman and when I was a manager and getting people to do things, and now as I'm uh, training people, is that you have to solve their problems. Mm-hmm. That's why they're there. Uh, you know, I'm, I've got something going on here, and I need, to, I need to have it fixed. You know, people are asking you, for, you know, how are you feeling? Well, eh, not too bad, not too great. And when they walk into my place, I need to fix that. Right. Well, this Dr. Bostek says, um, you know, speaking about this whole resiliency, expecting Mm -hmm. improvements in mental resiliency without first addressing a lack of sleep is a pretty tall order. And she's got science to back it up. In the current context in which over 40% of employees are regularly getting fewer than the recommended seven hours of sleep per night, Expected improvements in mental resiliency without first addressing their lack of sleep really causes a problem. And the sleep-deprived brain is effectively wearing a mental straitjacket. Yes, and, uh, of course, we see the problems that we have with these shootings and workplaces. And, you know, so that's a result of the, the imbalance in these workplaces and people just getting mad and uh, they uh, lose a fuse. You know. Yeah, they lose a fuse and they kind of become, and they become stressed and stress yeah. depletes the B vitamins. And we know like B12 is tied to sanity. Yeah. And we have this stress response that just all of a sudden is at its last little leg, the amygdala, which is part of the brain responsible for initiating this, our fight or flight stress response. Uh, when we're short on sleep, the amygdala becomes hyper reactive. Yes. So we're effectively running on a very short fuse. We're more likely to interpret challenges as threats and feel irritable, anxious, and out of control. And then snap, something happens. You go grab your gun and you start shooting your friends. Yeah, that's what they say. It's a lack of empathy that people exhibit when they don't sleep well. They, don't, they can't relate to other people. They're kind of self-absorbed because they're not getting their refueling. Yeah. Also, the conflict and lack of empathy, it's hard to maintain supportive yeah. relationships. We find it hard to empathize with others, to, to walk in your brother's mm-hmm. shoes, so to speak. Yeah. And, and, and people have a low self-regulatory capacity. They really can't control themselves. Easy right. to outburst, uh, illogical arguments, um, so forth. Yeah. And there's a lack of creativity. And after yes. all, in a workplace, you want people to present their best creative face yeah, forward. It's very difficult when you're under stress to come up with new things because new things aren't in you yet. They kind of pop out of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I notice when writing music and things like that, if I'm under stress, it just doesn't work. You know, right. you just put the guitar down and it doesn't work anymore. So in summary, sleep and stress, you, you know, if you found yourself waking up repeatedly in the early hours of the morning, tired yet wired, poor sleep is often the first sign of stress, even before you can put your finger on the cause. And the brain never completely relaxes and the racing mind will not switch off. Yeah. I just, I, you know, I'm going to have to visit her site. Uh, so she's really... 
talking about this problem, well, she, but she's offering great solutions, too. She does, and it's a great talk that she has. She's, she's a very enthusiastic speaker. That's what kept me going. Are you gonna put, are you going to put oh, her course. link in, yeah, in the yeah. newsletter? Super. Yeah. Okay, great. So at least the one in five employees suffers from chronic insomnia, sleep problems, which persist for at least three months and interfere with day-to-day -day work. Well, if you're getting problems for that long, you're definitely going to mm -hmm. interfere not only with work, but I, I would say at home, too. And untreated, these employers are more than double the risk of fu future anxieties, depression, or burnout. And, of course, uh, this causes the problems with the relationship uh, with the employees. And then you have somebody that doesn't work very effectively anymore. And now what do you do with them? Well, there's good news. You know, the gold standard for addressing insomnia is called cognitive behavior therapy, or CBT, for insomnia. It turns out that this technique helps promote sleep mindfulness and changes behaviors and negative thoughts so there is a solution Definitely. a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow <laughs> I like that. so we'll be right back uh, in the meantime please pick up our primal edge and also please our health signal newsletter We'd like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz order page at tfnn.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Nico and I are talking today about the importance of sleep. And, you know, our show has always been about living a primal lifestyle. And we go, we've always said it's beyond the food. You've always been more focused on the food. And I think in the last couple of years, I've moved towards the rhythm or mm -hmm. the light. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a good combination yeah. where we're yeah. showing. But let's talk about some of these things. So we've mentioned blue light. You know that blue light really, truly does affect your sleep. And how does that happen? You know, whether you're looking at your phone or your tablet or your computer screen at night, it's bad for your sleep. It's hard to stop. It really is. But there's one reason that there's been a growing interest in glasses or 
blue blocking apps and it's because it's not just the blue light it's the white light it's mm -hmm. an unnatural night it's unnatural for these spectrums to be available at night yeah and uh i think probably during the last 150 years with the advent of the light bulb itself which in first was more like a candle burning so it was much yes. more natural to us it's not funny that they've stopped they, they don't want us to have incandescent lights no why well, they'll claim because it uses more energy, but uh, there's lots of other reasons why I they think may it want it. Creates but a Google disruption. apparently does not. Mm -hmm. So some of these companies are really looking into the reasons why. And uh, I'll put that talk into the uh, show notes uh, and into the uh, newsletter, of course. Uh, but I really wanted to hit this because in modern living, it gets harder and harder. And I was just driving down the road the other day on uh, Virginia Avenue, and they were putting up these cell towers these uh, monstrosities that mm -hmm. uh, are these big arrays of about 10 things that they put on these poles, and this is in Dunedin, and mm -hmm. they're putting them on just about every pole. It's and I awful. Notice, That's awful. Five, yeah, five I notice eight. they're putting like two here, and then they'll go a few mm -hmm. blocks over and put two here so they don't disrupt the whole neighborhood, and it's kind of trying to do it stealthy. But let's get back to the blue light, because uh, now we're being encouraged by just about every company and our government to switch over to LED, mm -hmm. which saves you a lot of money, because these LED lights last pretty much forever. Uh, they the have ones a very use, unnatural Yeah, uh, I, they're great on my truck. I love them on my truck, because I'm not going to have to change my lights anymore. I put them on, and boom, they're guaranteed I mean, well, for life. Your, head, your headlights are screwing up everyone who drives, yeah. and that's why when you drive, uh, when it's still dark, you should get some glasses that cut those blue lights mm -hmm. because those blue lights from sexy lights on cars mm -hmm. like yours, and actually my car has them too, <laughs> are messing up yeah. other people's yeah. circadian rhythm. It's like a shot into the eye saying, hey, blue light, wake up, eat food, yeah. get fat. And everybody's putting them in, into their homes, and I think outside the home, probably a good idea because you can see a little bit better. But inside the home, we have decided to, to use the end incandescent and even to shut those down and use the real Buy yellow. red light bulbs. Yeah. Buy red light bulbs and put in, like in each of my rooms now, I have um, a red light bulb. So in the yeah. evening, it's almost like a salt lamp. I either yeah. have a salt lamp on That's what we have, the salt or, or a red a, a red light bulb in one of the lights, and yeah. then I don't turn the other ones on. Right, and that happens around our house around 8 o'clock, and that's when, you know, we start shutting down a little bit and uh, uh, kind of detuning. And let me, let me give you so a quote here. So routine um, is important. Yeah. Our light exposure between when the sun sets and the sun rises is probably the primary driver of sleep deficiency in our society. And while this includes artificial lights of all kinds, light from electronic devices that emit blue light, such as the LED display on your iPads uh, and modern computers and television screens, <laughs> I mean, forget about being on your iPad, turn on the boob tube. I mean, there it is. Yeah. And, it, and this is particularly problematic for sleep. And this was uh, a quote from the chief um, medical officer of the Division of Sleep and Circadian Disorders at Brigham and, William, and Women's Health hospital in boston and um you know so a lot of us are trying to protect our eyes i have a an app that i've, I've talked to you about my friend matt maruka who i met on a trip with jack cruz who who taught me the shortcut that truly makes your phone super red you know have i ever showed that to you Nico? no you haven't showed that to i have to show it to okay. you in the break but um light affects our sleep because it it interferes with the proper imp the proper and the improper release of melatonin, which is our sleep and repair hormone. Yeah. And so how to regulate the blue light to improve your sleep so get more sun during the day? You've often said that, and that's what uh, Cruz always told you, right? Mm -hmm. That uh, we need more sun, and uh, everything indicates that we're shying away from it. Except for today, because I'm driving when it happens. Mm -hmm. I get up now, and I'm out in the sunrise. Yeah. So another thing you can do to regulate the blue light is to reduce your screen time at night. Mm -hmm. Research shows that limiting blue light exposure at night can help improve sleep, especially if a person has trouble sleeping in the first place. Watch what I do here. Oh. See? Oh. Yeah, and now watch this. I can take my screen, I reduce the white point, and oh. I'm really, yeah. yeah, reduce the light. So if you do have to look at a screen... That's a great way to be able to do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, a study comparing participants with an average uh, age of 23 with those with the average age of 61 found the younger participants were far more affected by the blue light. Mm -hmm. Now, they, uh, the author says that adolescents are more sensitive than people in their 20s, uh, and the younger kids around 7 or 8 are even more susceptible. And we see people kids. wonder why their kids are bouncing off the walls. Yeah. And uh, 
they say that one of the reasons China's had so much success with the one-child policy is most people have a fertility issue due to the blue light. Sure, that yeah. makes sense too. I mean, they're all have a, on their computers. Yeah. It really is a, um, a habit we have to break. You know, try and do your computer and screen time. But that includes the TV, folks. That TV is one big blue screen. Well, especially now, I still have my two plasmas. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was telling Ellen uh, a couple of well, this is when I was on a rant. I said, this is the last TV we'll ever buy, you know. Mm -hmm. We'll see how far that goes. But the new ones are all LED or versions of LEDs. Mm -hmm. So we have definitely got brighter colors, brighter whites, and it comes from this blue light. Well, yeah. and that's when you can use these other things, like yeah. try special glasses. Yeah. Uh, set up apps uh, that block the blue light at night yeah, on I your see computers TVs, like I just showed you. And I see TVs coming out maybe having the ability to do this automatically at night, you know, to help us, you know, hopefully that's what they do. All of you all have the Apple's night shift uh, mode. If you have an Apple phone, I'm sure uh, Androids have the same thing. But like I said, there's some other apps that, that kind of are hidden that they don't talk to you about this color filter mm -hmm. app. And you can Google about it, the color, how to reduce... Uh, how to enhance the color filters and reduce the white point on iPhones. And that's there's some videos out there on YouTube that show you exactly how to do it. Yeah, the other thing about uh, tablets and things like that is that uh, because of the type of information on there, it could add to the stress level of you. So not, not only are you getting the blue light from the tablet, but now you're reading something that bugs you and uh, gets under your craw, and now you're stressed even more. Exactly. The nighttime needs to be a time that we de-stress, yeah. and it's tough. I know a lot of us have a busy day, and we sort of sort of a catch-22. We love that evening time to go read our conspiracy stuff or <laughs> Well, not find out only that, some on. people are really into the news and you want to catch up, you want to have some kind of idea of what's going on. And, you know, I, I turned it on uh, last night for about 20 minutes and I goes, oh, Jesus, I gotta turn this thing off. I'm telling you, um, you know, when I was getting my Loomis Digestive Food Enzyme Therapy Digestive Specialist, mm -hmm. they told us that the number one issue for digestive health was not to have a meal with the television on, particularly the news. The news, for sure. Because yeah. those sub, those subjects are designed to create fear. If, you were listen, if, if you're ever, like, not looking at the TV and you listen to it, you can see there's such a strategy to rouse people, to keep them on guard, fear. Well, everything's breaking news. Mm -hmm. when on, nothing is. I was listening yeah. to it last night, and they were talking about, you know, our survivability of the earth, you know, talking about plastics and so forth. We all know that we don't want to pollute and everything, but I could tell that the headline was written to create fear. What can I do? I guess I need to be taxed to death so I can <laughs> do my part to s save the world, right? Crazy, crazy world. <laughs> Stick around, folks. we got a lot more. We'll be right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, 
South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And welcome back. Did you know that uh, alcohol consumption at almost any level can cause sleep disruption? Yeah, I think a lot of people think that alcohol helps them to relax, and at first it does, but yeah. it truly does disrupt those cycles that I talked about in the beginning. There's really important waves and cycles we need to fall into. I'm sure if you're really honest with yourself, you might can get away with one cocktail or beverage or glass of wine, maybe with your meal earlier in the evening and not, and not have as much of an issue. But much more than that, you're going to wake up 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. That seems to be the pattern, and uh, the less is better for sure. Uh, and if you uh, have alcohol earlier in the day and stop, it might be a little bit better, but it seems to be that one drink is okay, and after that one drink, then uh, some type of disturbance in your sleep happens. Hey, let's just go over that, that what is normal sleep pattern? I was mm. talking about it. Normally, sleep can, uh, consists of two alternating states, those cycles I mentioned, mm -hmm. and those are where the brain waves exhibit different types of activity. We have slow wave sleep. And then we have rapid eye movement or REM sleep. And so those cycles, you're going from slow wave to REM to slow wave. And I think that sub, you know things like alcohol and things like inappropriate light hygiene, I call it, uh, these are all disrupting our sleep. Yeah, well, there's a, additionally, there's a, research has identified a transition light sleep stage that occurs at intervals during the sleep period. So when you're talking about that rhythm, you go into a deep phase mm -hmm. and then you go into a lighter phase. And uh, it seems to be that alcohol disturbs that one and kind of jolts it where you wake up. Mm -hmm. And science does not know what really, uh, what the function of REM sleep performs in the body. I believe that's when a lot of the healing work is done. But it seems to be required for restoration, as mm -hmm. I say. Some studies have found that when laboratory rats are deprived of REM sleep, it can result in death when, within a few weeks. Wow. Wow. So that's how important sleep is, guys. Yeah. As originally thought, the sleep was a result of decreased activity in the brain systems that maintain wakefulness. But the research has now shown that sleep is an active process of the brain controlled by nerve centers in the lower brain stem. Mm, yeah. So some of the nerve stems produce a serotonin, a chemical which has been linked to the onset of sleep and with the regulation of slow-wave sleep. It's not known exactly how these and other chemicals in the brain actually interact uh, to control sleep, but we do know that alcohol consumption alters the function of these chemical messengers and therefore affects your sleep patterns. Yeah, in the alcohol study, and light. Yeah, in the study they say that many people who are suffering from insomnia will take a drink beforehand mm -hmm. just to kind of help them yeah, ease into it. It's then, a, I mean, I, I get it because I do think sometimes after a long day it kind of helps you to relax, but it really disrupts things. Mm -hmm. We need to find other ways to relax. Wow. It says here, happy hour drinks can affect sleep too. Studies have found that alcohol consumption even six hours before at bed, at bedtime. So that can increase the wakefulness during the right. second half of sleep, even though the alcohol consumed has already been eliminated from the body. 
Mm. And also chronic alcohol users appear to be linked with the increase of sleep apnea. Well, there you go. Alcohol and breathing disorders. Mm. Chronic alcohol use appears to be linked to an increased risk for sleep apnea, especially when drinkers who snore. Mm -hmm. And there's an, uh, there is a huge surge of sleep apnea, of sleep disordered breathing, of upper airway resistance syndrome. We're mm -hmm. going to talk more about that because I, you know, I'm doing all this with my jaw. Yep. I'm opening up my four bicuspids, the spots where the teeth were, because my tongue doesn't have enough room. I'm not the only person that has this. No, there's people. There's people walking around. I mean, our bones didn't grow to their genetic yeah. potential due using, to our diet. I've been using the tape. And we, as we I'm out tape too. It's, it, you and breathe it, more through your nose. Yeah, breathe through your nose more. And even uh, a lot of times I'll take the thing off in the middle of the night. And uh, I find myself breathing through my nose really mm -hmm. well. And mm -hmm. it, uh, it's, it's a habit that you need to have. It's, uh, it really impacts your health. Uh, on a positive level, it makes you breathe a lot easier. I notice in the morning I have less problems with coughing and things like that. So something I ne you need to explore, and I bought these rolls of tape. I probably have enough tape for 10 years, but uh, I thought I'd be prepared. I just want to continue this because I know it helps me. Mm -hmm. And I even discussed it with my dentist, and he agreed. I think they're starting to catch on. Some so. of them are. Well, they, you know, the ones they want to learn. Well, I'll tell you another thing. Um, if you do part your lips and you... Go to breathing out of your mouth. Now, I want you to think about this. I mean, most people go, oh, I don't mouth breathe. Oh, most people do when they're yeah. sleeping. Their mouth falls back because it's naturally the jaw falls back. And then they breathe through their mouth. So the air, the oxygen is going from the mouth down through the body. It's not getting up through the nose and in the brain. Mm -hmm. This is why alternate nostril breathing is such a big thing in yogic science mm -hmm. to, you know, oxygenate the brain. But the other thing is... Uh, there's a real high incidence of cavities in mouth breathers. See? The, it makes sense more oxygen air, going in there. Well, the air is going in through the mouth, and the bacteria in your mouth are... Reacts to the oxygen. Reacts to the oxygen and, and attacks yeah. the tooth enamel. So that's something to think about. Yeah. So I think this is really important if we can start to help people. Yeah, and especially as you hygiene. get older, because aging, alcohol, and sleep disorders kind of go hand in hand. When people get older, they naturally experience a decrease in slow wave sleep and an increase in nighttime wakefulness. Now, we have talked also about the, uh, the guardian type of thing, where the eldest person in the tribe wakes up in the middle of the night and walks around and makes sure everything's all right and goes back to mm -hmm. sleep. It seems to be a natural thing. So me waking up at 2 o'clock now and wandering through my house seems more natural to me, and I do that, and I go to sleep pretty much right, out, right, right, right away. back away. So I don't know if this is that centennial thing or it might be the glass of wine I had earlier. So who knows? You know. Yeah, I do know. Uh, I notice a real difference. If I've had alcohol in my sleep quality. Sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do too. No and then I always say, oh, I'm not going to do that again. But then yeah. we do. But we, we, we need to be aware of this. Yeah. So alcohol, alcoholics going through withdrawal can experience some of these things too. Reduction in restful sleep naturally because mm -hmm. now you've got a lot of anxiety going on in your body. Mm -hmm. Increased REM sleep related to withdrawal hallucinations. So you probably have a lot of wicked dreams going on mm -hmm. while you're withdrawing. Mm -hmm. Sleep consisting of brief periods of REM deep sleep and sleep interrupted by numerous awakenings. Yeah, I think that withdrawing was probably for sure because you've become dependent on a certain type of um, you know, sleep pattern. Yeah, well, uh, apparently alcoholics have uh, a lot of uh, problems with normal sleep patterns. Sometimes they say they can never return mm. for the chronic ones. Yeah. Studies have found that recovering alcoholics try to sleep poorly. Or they tend, tend, to, to. tend to sleep poorly. And they have, they have less slow-wave sleep and increased wakefulness, resulting in less restorative sleep and daytime fatigue. Yeah. I think that we need to start to realize that sleep is not some you know, blacked out time that's like a waste of time. I think a lot of people are like, I don't have time to sleep. Yeah. No, you can't afford not to sleep. And this is a very, a very important biological processes are happening in our sleep. Yeah. It's when we repair. It's when we rejuvenate. It's when we de-stress. So uh, when we get back from the uh, break, or in fact, we still have a minute left, so let's go into some of those things that can help us break out of this cycle and get our sleep that we have. Because I've got a yeah, the five, let's go over those five drug-free ways to get a good night's sleep. Yep. Um, because everyone desperately needs a good night's sleep, and, um, and perhaps you need some tools to help you get better at it. Because sleep deprivation really does affect you. 
and it affects everyone at one time or another, and that's because insomnia and staying up late or not getting the right waves of sleep impacts our health. Yep. So we're going to go over the five ways to help you get a good night's sleep, tools you can use when we come back after this break. Stick around. Pick up the Health Signals newsletter now. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Think or Swim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. So being deprived of sleep is, uh, it kind of sucks. So here are some steps that help you uh, get proper restful sleep without taking any medications. Yeah, exactly. Start with maintaining a routine. Routines are Very beneficial important. for getting a good night's sleep. Really kind of get your own circadian rhythm and try to maximize you're sleeping, you know, when it gets dark, it's time to go to bed. That's what yeah. our primal guys did. And also, I would uh, advocate uh, that, that prep time to be about 60 minutes, about an hour. Mm -hmm. Give yourself about an hour to, you know, shut the lights down and everything like that. Get off the electronic yeah, devices. Get, yeah, and that's number yourself, two. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's for sure. You need to get off those things. So by about an hour or two before you go to sleep, you should turn off those things. And then... Uh, get back to the old-fashioned book. Yeah, I think that's good Yeah, idea. exactly. Uh, another thing, don't drink caffeine after 5 p.m. For some people, that might be 2 p.m. It yeah. just depends, you know. It's in different times. If you're at higher stress level, I would say caffeine will probably raise that uh, stress level a little right, bit. Right, because caffeine reduces the total sleep time and increases the number of arousals from sleep. And, you know, we, we'll, we'll add our number 3.5, which is 
uh, watch your al alcohol consumption. If yeah. you're concerned about your sleep waking, that definitely impacts it. Yeah, so number four is uh, exercise. Uh, exercise is good to keep you healthy, but it's not good for sleeping. Uh, everybody's a little bit different on that. I used to go for night runs. And well, it says okay. it is good for helping you sleep. I mean, yeah. Although I think some people, if they go and do a workout, if it's too stressful, you, you, that, that serotonin is gone. It Ooh, could, you know. it could, it could wake you up too much. You got to know when's the right time to exercise. And okay. using breathing, breathing exercise. You know, we have the yoga breathing. We have the uh, William Huff types of breathing. Uh -huh. So there's many Qigong styles. Qigong breathing. Yeah, many styles. They're all effective in certain ways. I use uh, quite a few of them, and I find they do help me relax. They just help me get into a better mindset and set my body up for being healthy. That's and they help you thing. get to sleep faster and to stay asleep. Yeah. And there's other methods for restful sleep. Perhaps uh, if you're not getting up to see the sunrise, remember the sunrise, as I've taught you all, is, is the signal to the brain that says in 12 to 15 hours, start releasing melatonin. How many people wake up in the dark, get dressed, drive in the dark to the car, go into a building before the sunrise, they don't see the sunrise. Yeah. And, and the, so they don't get that rhythm. So remember, you, you want to get out in the morning to get your cycle going. I agree. Thanks for sticking around, folks. We'll see you next week. Have a great day. Bye.